How you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk. And today we're going to answer a question that was sent from one of, our, one of our subscribers. The question is, Ganj, what advice would you give a female working in a male facility? I think it's a great question, and obviously feel free to comment below your advice. I think the advice I'm going to provide after the sponsors is going to be rather universal, which means I think it can be applied to uh, both females working in male jails and males working in female jails or prisons. So uh, when I come back from our sponsors, let's answer our question. What advice would you give to a female officer working in a male facility. So stand by for our sponsors. And guys, if you haven't, the show's for you. So please, guys, subscribe, interact, engage, and hit that bell. That bell's gonna notify you every time I post up a video. I stand by for our sponsors. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University, learn from the leader. Being a corrections officer takes its toll on even the strongest individuals. The constant need to perform at the highest level putting your life at risk in a hostile environment, and the mental scarring of traumatic experiences. 31% of corrections officers show symptoms of PTSD, and 66% of people with PTSD also suffer with a substance abuse problem. The Transformations First Responders Program is specially designed to help veterans and officers heal from the grips of addiction and PTSD in a comfortable, supportive, and serene setting. You are not alone. If you have questions about the services we offer, give us a call at 866-762-8454 to get more information on this affordable and life-changing program. Thank you guys for listening to our sponsors. So again, you know, I think the advice I'm going to give here is rather universal. I think it could apply to both genders. You know, males working in female facilities, females working in male facilities. could even apply to rookie COs. But with that said, first thing I would do, establish your sense of authority. Let the inmates know that you mean business. Set that standard high. Zero tolerance for any type of rule infraction. Minor, major, it don't matter. You can always work down later on when you get experience, develop some form of discretion. But in the meantime, zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. you got to remember something, guys. Our authority, our sense of authority, how the inmates perceive us, go way past the uniform. We don't have that automatic initial first impression of the power of the uniform. We don't have that. Inmates are conditioned to us. So what inmates look for is the individual. How does that individual present themselves? So right off the bat, that inmate's looking past your uniform and they're looking at you. They're conditioned. So with that said, you have to show them that sense of authority immediately. That you're zero tolerance. Also, inmates... They may throw a compliment your way, and they're going to test you on how you react to that compliment, because it's that compliment and your reaction that can open the way towards manipulation. So I'll give you an example. An inmate comes up and says, hey, CO, you smell nice, and you choose to ignore that compliment and walk off. Wrong. Wrong. If the inmate compliments you again, hey, you smell nice. And then you get in their face, hey, that, com that, that, that comment is inappropriate. The inmate says, why is it inappropriate? I didn't mean anything by it. Now, remember, guys, that's the test on how you answer that why. Inmates look to manipulate the why. They look to manipulate the justification of your response. Remember that. That's the key. That why is where they will look to manipulate. So if you say that the comment's inappropriate because the rules say it's inappropriate, well, that means to the inmate's mind, well, if it wasn't for the rules, we could be together. The only thing that's keeping us apart are the rules. That inmate's got to know that it goes beyond the rules, that it's you that finds that behavior inappropriate. You get in that inmate's face and say, hey, that comment is inappropriate. Why? Because I said it's inappropriate. That's it. Comment is inappropriate. Done. I would even go as far... At the beginning of your career, document in that action. Let others know, first off, that you're zero tolerance for that type of comment. 
let the other inmates see that you're zero tolerance, but also it helps out your other staff members who may not be as strong as you are, who's still developing. And we have to protect our own. So writing a statement like that will give us a history of who this inmate is and the games that they try to employ. And supervisors should support that. This person tried to manipulate. We documented it. Now, when you're in that unit, hey, be careful of this inmate. Look at this. He's got about 12, 13 write-ups on, on due familiarity. Again, these are quick little comments. I did a lot of videos on rookies, uh, advice for officers. I, I, I still think those videos would apply to a female entering a male facility because I see us as equals. I see us as equals. You know, again, it's more about establishing that sense of authority right at the very beginning. Zero tolerance. You know, the inmate's going to look at you, not the uniform. That's how it is. And, and, and definitely how you react to the compliments. Making the inmate know right off the bat that those, those comments are unacceptable. And going as far as documenting because it will let others know of the game that the inmate's playing. This way it's not something that people are not aware of. And that will help you protect staff that may not be as strong as you are. And that's what we do. Sometimes we have to police each other because sometimes it takes us a while to develop and become what we need to be. Sometimes we're going to pass and fail a lot of tests. It just is what it is because you will be tested every day. You will be tested every day, whether you're male, female, rookie. You will be tested. And how we learn is through the test, whether we pass or whether we fail. That's how we learn. But if there's a chance that we can help each other before we fail... That's what we need to do. And I think document and those inmates' interactions is a great way, a very good preventive measure that would stop that inmate in its tracks and make sure that that inmate knows I'm zero tolerance for that. And you know what? It goes beyond that now. Now the facility is going to know what you did. And that will immediately establish a sense of authority for you. And I think the supervisors will be able to support that, at least at the beginning of your career. I would go as far as always documenting that because you always got to be concerned of that. That one officer, that one staff member that fell for, you always have to be concerned that could happen. So I would always document and let the people know that this is that type of inmate. Be aware. Be aware. Be aware. As always, guys, the show is Tear Talk. Please, guys, if you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage. And don't forget, hit that bell. That bell is going to notify you every time I post a video. It's cold. Got to go back. Got to do some shoveling. So as always, the show is uh, Tear Talk. My name is Anthony Ganji, and uh, see you tomorrow.